Don't worry. Okay, this kid is around 100 liras. <laughs> Apparently, while I was writing two slides, the US dollar increased. So it's about 200, dollars now, uh, 200 liras now, so don't forget that. You're highly recommended to buy it, guys, to study at home. Okay, let me continue with the slides. Do's and don'ts. My final, I, I, I did a lot of advices. You are bored of it. I'm sorry, but I must say this. Otherwise, students get shocked. And if the students get, uh, get, get over this shock very quickly, I can see that they become very successful. I mean, last year, uh, I was very happy with my students. I mean, most of them, like about 10 of you, were very successful in the course. Prepare for the labs, okay? The labs are not demonstrations. It's a chance for you to study with the teaching assistant. He is very good. He, he, he had his master on microprocessors and embedded systems. He's doing you know, his PhD on this stuff as well. He's very good. You are very lucky. You have a very good teaching assistant, okay? If you cannot do it, Google and YouTube. Guys, in my opinion, the duty of a university is to teach you guys how to make, how to be able to make research independently on your own. And I'm, I'll try to do it this way in this course as well. And please do not expect too much help. Okay, ask for help, but not too much help. We are trying to learn how to fish yourself. Okay, and uh, the labs are taught to be individual. There could be partners, we are not sure of it yet. If there are partners, please don't let your partner do all the work, okay? Because he or she is going to learn it. And in the exams, he or she will most probably not be able to help your case, oh, guys, okay? Okay, now we start with the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller. The microprocessor is an integrated circuit. So it is like, integral is an integrated circuit. This is an integrated circuit, guys. That black thing is an integrated circuit, that little thing. Which only has a central processing unit, CPU inside. Wow, central processing unit. We have no idea what it is, but we are going to learn. These microprocessors don't have a RAM or ROM, which is a memory, which is something you can keep information in, okay? How do we keep information? What are the bits, zero and then ones, we'll learn. Okay, and it doesn't have other peripherals on the chip. What is a peripheral? Peripheral means in English, interface. So you cannot interact with the CPU, okay? So if you have a microprocessor only, which is only this black thing, you need to, as a designer, create an environment like this card to use this microprocessor, okay? However, unlike microprocessor, the microcontroller possesses this chip and along with the RAM and the peripherals and everything. So guys, this little black thing is the microprocessor. This whole thing that you're supposed to buy or borrow from the university lab is the microcontroller. The first thing we have learned. Okay, good. I guess it's simple. Um, sorry, sorry. Sessions. Okay. Microprocessor versus microcontroller. You know what they are now. Okay, I'm going to start with very, very simply the microprocessor architecture. Okay, before I begin, any questions? Because I'm finished with the administrative stuff. I made a small introduction technically. If any questions about the administrative stuff or anything else, please ask now. I'm going to start with the architecture. Any questions? I'm looking at the chat. No. Well, no questions means two things, guys. Either you are very excited and just understood everything very well. That's, I mean. Hocam, bir şey sorabilir miyim? Lütfen, please, thank you. GPU da microprocessorun içine girer mi? Very nice question. Well, GPU is called, actually, uh, I'm going to talk about them in the next semester's uh, course. Uh, there's a course in next semester, it's a technical elective, it's called Embedded Systems. Graphical Processing Unit, GPU, is a kind of what is called coprocessor, guys. It's called coprocessor. In English, if you have this additive co at the beginning of a word, it means something that helps, okay? So a coprocessor is something that helps the processor. In your processor, you'll be able to do a lot of things. And you can calculate math calculations, addition, division, any mathematical operation or arithmetical uh, operation, ending, ordering, but you, when sometimes you will need specific operations, like in the GPU. In graphical uh, processing units, you use them for, either you use them for gains, 
or deep learning. I use them for both. Um, what you are doing is you have to render when you're playing a game. You have to render a 3D scene, right? Rendering requires a specific matrix operation. And for each pixel on screen, you do it zillions of times. And if you had a coprocessor, which is specifically designed, architecturally designed, to make that matrix operation only, cannot do something else. That's called a coprocessor, because the actual processor can do that operation, but it can do it very slowly. But if it has this coprocessor GPU, it connects to it, just please do these operations for me. Okay, I'm going to render the screen. Okay, no problem. It does it. And you have a very fast frame per second game in the screen. So GPU is a kind of computer. It's a kind of processing unit, but it's classified as graphical uh, coprocessor, guys. Okay, answer to your question? Okay. Okay, now, any questions? Good question, by the way. Thank you. Okay, I was saying if there are no questions, it's either too bad or too. Okay. Şimdi soracağım ben. Ben derse girmeden önce bu PDF açıp bakmıştım da birazcık. Bizim bu derste göreceğimiz şey, hani CPU'nun sıfırdan tasarım mı, hani transistörlerle bağlantısı falan mı yoksa genel işleyişi mi? Again, very good question, guys. Thank you very much. Your friend is asking what we are going to learn in this class. Are we going to learn the architectural design of the microprocessor, or how it's used, or how it is connected to other devices? Guys, very good question, thank you. Um, actually, there are two separate courses for it. The architectural design of a microprocessor, both in logical design, I mean bits and binary connections, and from tra transistors, is another course. It's called computer architecture. And we have that course partially as a technical elective course, guys. This course is about microprocessors. We are going to learn how to use it, how to program it, and why it is important to learn microprocessor assembly language so that we could control embedded systems and embedded programming. Okay, so it's a very nice question. I'm going to stop screen sharing. Please look at my camera now, okay? I'm going to show you something. Can you see it? No, you can't see it. I hope you can see it. Okay. What was the name? Okay. What is the next course name? Sure. Okay, I guess I guess that explains a lot. Right. Well, guys, I'm hoping that you can see the screen. You've learned circuits and systems. You know how to construct circuits, guys. Then Selçuk Hoca taught you analog circuits, right? Now you could use op-amps to make logic. So you could you had an analog circuitry, you had current dividers, you could do tricks with the circuits, right? In digital circuits, you learned how to create gates. Do you remember that? I hope you said, ah, you're learning electronic to uh, this semester, right? Whatever. You learn how to do gates using transistors, like flip-flops and gates. Actually, when you can do logic like AND gates or gates, it becomes theoretical as well. In digital design, you learn how to use AND gates and OR gates. At this point, you can either use your knowledge to design a computer CPU using computer architecture courses, or you can get a microprocessor and learn how to use it. This is a called a track, guys. Actually, in English, uh, in uh, Britain, British universities, this is called a course. Uh, for a single course, we call this microprocessor a course, but course means in English, a long way you walk. You know that? So these are modules of a course. And this is called the computer option of electrical and electronics engineering, guys. So we are here. So I hope this answers your question. We'll be talking about how we are going to use microprocessors, not the architectural design. Let me share my screen again. So this is it. Okay. So you can see the screen, right? Comes. Okay. Answer to your question. 
Okay. Yes. Thanks. Uh, Chara asks, he's asking, um, what is the LAN uh, wireless drivers or the um, sound card? Are they coprocessor as well? Well, driver is something software. So it is not a processor. Processor is inherently something hardware, guys. But the sound card is definitely a processor, yes. But the sound card has analog components as well. So it is a coprocessor, also an interface. It's also a peripheral because you'll be able to connect an analog sound signal to it. So in your projects, you may, uh, in embedded systems, uh, we teach you how to connect an analog uh, input to your microprocessor. It's called analog digital conversion. Well, you need a peripheral for it. But yes, anything that helps the microprocessor to compute something, guys, compute something, is called a coprocessor. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Good. Very good questions and very nice uh, interest, guys. Okay, then. Guys, uh, I think this was nice. Let's give a break. Let me just record it because before I start, it, start the architecture, it's better we give a break. Let's meet at 5 past 11. Is that okay? Somebody say yes. Tamam, Jim. Thank you. Okay, let me just stop the recording. I'm ending the meeting to record, get the records. I'll uh, invite you again.